Yeah, so, uh, I mean, one interesting uh, kind of consideration for us as we started making the film uh, was that we were aware we wanted to follow what was happening to the LGBT community in Uganda, and we knew we wanted to follow at least one or two characters within the community itself. Um, but there was definitely a point when we had to make the decision of to what extent we wanted to follow the um, the folks who were the authors of this anti-homosexuality bill or who were kind of pushing for it, the pastors who were pushing for it, whether American evangelical pastors or Ugandan pastors. Um, and eventually the we kind of reached a decision that ultimately the story that wasn't, that hadn't already been told in or hadn't already been extensively covered at that point was the story of what the LGBT community was doing on the ground because we would uh, we would go there to shoot and come back to the US and what was interesting was the the issue of the American evangelicals was getting covered quite a lot and um, journalists like Jeff Charlotte who's an investigative journalist and does a lot for the Atlantic and some other journalists had done some really great work to and Rachel Maddow as well had done some really great work to really try and look at the American evangelicals who were um, who would you know uh, pushing for this kind of legislation in Uganda and elsewhere. Um, but one thing that just never seemed to be covered was was these activists who, from our experience in Uganda, were actually doing an incredible amount of work to draw attention to the issue. But every time we'd kind of read about it or hear, see the news about it, whether in, on CNN or in the New York Times, the story always used to be mostly like, look at these poor gay people and what's happening to them. And there seemed to be very little coverage of the fact that there were these incredible activists within the, that community who are doing amazing work. So we realized that in order to do that any justice, we needed to really focus on following a number of characters within that community. That said, of course, it was really important to also at least um, give voice to a couple of people who are um, working on the other side of the issue, um, like the Member of Parliament, David Bahati, who wrote the bill, like Gars Muhammi, the, the editor of the Rolling Stone newspaper, which was outing members of the community. So um, we did those interviews and we kind of realised that the point of those interviews wasn't for us to challenge them, it was really just to give them an opportunity to explain their motivations and their reasoning mm -hmm. behind these things. And ultimately, you know, from our point of view, they would they hang themselves in, in those interviews, and we really didn't need to do much to get them to to do that. Um, but it was kind of important to us that we'd include their voices, even if we had decided not to follow them in detail, to at least kind of hear their reasoning as well, because it was it's one of those things where it's important to understand how their reasoning um, for these act, for these decisions and how they're even you know persuading congregations or or members of the Ugandan population that this is the big, most evil thing ever. <laughs> mm. um, so that was, that was kind of the decision process we went through. I mean, of course, we could have, it, it, if we'd met an American evangelical working on this who was the most incredible character ever, we might have decided differently. But we, we just were really keen to focus on the story that seemed to be untold at that point and that seemed to be receiving very little attention in Europe and the US. I think it also goes back to what I was saying earlier, which is that it's really easy to just cherry pick really hateful, um, you know, violent calls for action and violence against the gay community um, and kind of point the finger at them and, and, you know, say, look at how, you know, how much destruction they're causing with these vicious statements. But that ultimately, I don't think, is going to be a very successful strategy, um, you know, given the wide breadth of audiences that we hope the film plays for. And so um, for us, I, we, we chose instead to let these kind of nemesis figures arise organically from within the narrative, and especially if we're trying to make a film that really humanizes the issue, um, you know, the nemesis figure also has to be humanized and has to come up or organically from that story. And so that's why someone like Giles ends up taking, um, you know, a pretty large part um, in, in the film because, uh, you know, because of this court case that David and the others had brought against him, um, you know, which made a direct connection between him and one of the main characters of the film and therefore a, um, a very logical reason why we would film him mm -hmm. and why you know the audience would be all the more invested in what he had to say and what kind of harm or good if that's how they feel he was causing because it was a indirect relation to um, you know the people with whom you spend so many um, minutes of the film um, mm -hmm. you know learning about and, and growing coming to care about.